Good morning everybody, about 8.40 or so, Sunday morning, 30th of September, a little bit of a later start than normal. I wanted to stay in bed, frankly. But uh, back to do some more body work, hammer and dolly work most likely. I'm going to slowly pan to my right here and show you what I found when I walked in this morning. Pretty cool. It's my garage mate's 240Z race car. He had to pull the motor because it's got, uh, it's got an oil leak. You can see that little puddle of oil, I think, down there. And uh, he's getting ready for a, a vintage race, I think, with it. Anyway, so that's a, a nice 240 motor there with triple Solex carburetor. So this is, puppy's got some uh, get up and go, I imagine. So this is a full-on race car, not a, not a modified, I mean, it is a modified 240, but I mean, it's not, uh, not something that you're going to just do on a track day and then take it home and, you know, run and go get groceries or something like that. So anyway, the... Uh, my room is, is limited, obviously, with doing that, but it shouldn't really matter all that much. So I'm going to continue on the hammer and dolly work, like I said, try to get that spot on the bonnet in the front there and, uh, and, and just uh, go down that path. Based on the viewership and uh, time from the last video, I know this stuff is getting a little dry. I can see it in the, uh, in the analytics the results, so I probably won't bore you with too much work here. So as I sometimes do, get a little shiny object distracted here decided to do a little autopsy on this rusty crack this is that uh, adjustment pole thing that goes inside the bonnet that support brackets a pivot tube that's what it's called and uh, pretty interesting looking cut open a little window there but it looks like that's all solid metal in there doesn't look like it's hollow which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because this is a tube so maybe it's just flat enough at this point that it's essentially hollow. So I'm going to try to get most of this rust out and everything. And I've got some 16 gauge metal. So if I can patch it, I think I'm going to go ahead and just try to patch it. We'll see how it turns out. But I thought I'd uh, show you this. Got a little template in there. So you can see where the metal is that I'm going to replace. Got that excavated out for the most part. That is uh, solid metal underneath there. I'm going to get the rust converter stuff in there and convert it over. But I'm just going to go ahead and get this piece of metal cut here. Like I said, I got this nice heavy duty 16 gauge stuff that I'll have to use a uh, cut off wheel for. But I'll get this cut up and fit. And then once it's fit, I'll get everything sprayed and de-rustified and all that kind of good stuff. Get that puppy welded in. 10 o'clock. Pieces all cleaned up. Don't have it rust converted yet. My little patch piece here. That guy will fit in just like if I can get it here with one hand. Just like that. A little bit of shaping left to do there, especially the corners kind of start to round a little bit. That's pretty subtle. Um, but I'll do that normal thing where I'll tack it away from that and then I'll just pound in, pound it flush, and then weld it up. So that, that actually went pretty well. I'm happy the way that came out. Again, I'm going to get some rust converter in there and let this sit for a little bit. And while I uh, get this little patch piece painted, and in the meantime, get ready to uh, get back to the glorious hammer and dolly work. All right, as you can see, I've got the piece up here, ready to weld it in again. I've got a pretty good fit down here, and as I move out and down the tube a little bit, I'm gonna have to use the hammer just to kind of bring this thing in. Alright, that's done. Cleaned up nice. So now I'm just going to go through and get the rest of the bar cleaned up like I did, or the tube cleaned up like I did for the other one. Make a mess with that, and then uh, that'll be it for that. 
about 11.30 or so, everything's all cleaned up and ready for, uh, I'm going to epoxy primer these guys, so when I get to the point where I'm ready to paint a whole bunch of stuff, this will go in the bin. Continuing on with the hammer and dolly work and some shrink disking. If you remember, I had made a pretty good mistake down here. You can see this big streak here, a couple spots, but I got that mostly flattened out, so I'm happy with that. A couple low spots, not too bad. And then in here, I'm working on this area. And again, this is where the door handle attaches. This is the door handle where the push button is and then the little catch for the rest of it. This was beat up pretty good just from the year, years of use. And then I had a pretty good ding up here. This was the area that had gotten some weld, or excuse me, some uh, slide hammer holes drilled into it. So I welded those up. So you can see this low spot here and this low spot here, kind of oval. Been slowly but surely trying to shrink those up. You can see the striations from the shrink disc, I think. But uh, so it's, it's coming along. Painful because one, you don't have a lot of access, of course, from the back of the door. And two, you got to really push. Um, from underneath to get the lows out and that's hard to do and uh, I've kind of have it rigged with a strap here but it's not uh, it's not a lot of weight here so it's not that great actually to uh, to help me hold stuff down I should strap it to the motor over there or something but anyway so that's uh, that's how I'm progressing along and you know this uh, this needs some more work here but the rest of the door is not uh, not too bad except for right on the crease here a little further down that's there's a couple dings there i'm not too sure what i'm going to do with those yet so there we are about three o'clock calling it a day got a soccer game to go to got the boot lid over there and the passenger side door they are ready with the exception of final cleaning for epoxy primer i've also got the front valance here um need to do a little bit of work on that but that'll be ready for epoxy primer also and if you can see around me, I've got the paint booth set up. So it's a little shorter now that the uh, Z's gotten getting the engine rebuilt. Got the bonnet down onto the ground and, and standing up kind of out of the way here. Try not to, not real concerned about overspray on that, but uh, I don't want to nail it. But next visit, my intention is to get these three pieces painted in preparation for filler work. Welcome to October. October 1st back over here, picking up where I left off. I got the uh, front balance in the sink here and uh, I've got the front of that all cleaned up and some of the heavier rust areas cleaned up and now I've got the rust converter stuff on that. I just sprayed that down a moment ago so I'm working on letting that cure up or whatever you want to call that. And then I've got most of the paint booth ready to go here. Um, one thing I am concerned with that I was thinking about over the last 24 hours or so is high spots that are too high. And then as I would add body filler and everything, I'd go right to metal first, or at least quickly. So I'm going to give these way, uh, the door and the boot lid here once over real quick, just to make sure that I don't have any bad high spots that would potentially cause me to just continually work and work and work and always grind the, uh, or sand the, the epoxy and everything else down to bare metal almost immediately. I don't want to do that. So we're going to uh, take a look at that and then hopefully start getting everything cleaned up and get closer to paint. Got the pieces sitting here patiently, waiting for me to come in and paint. They've been hit with wax and grease remover a couple times. This is my solution for the front balance, just hanging it from a piece of wood up there. Um, I'm going to have some problems getting it down in the lower corner down here, I'm sure, but uh, we'll try to make it work. But everything should be relatively clean. I got a tack rag it still, but otherwise it should be ready to go. And I'm about to fix the or mix the paint and induce it. And I wanted to show you this because it's kind of neat looking. So this is the part of the epoxy primer. That's the epoxy primer itself. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's got like a false top there. But this is why it's very important to mix your paint. So this has been sitting since at least I bought it. But you can see how it's completely separated from uh, this part A here. Part B, I still got to mix with the activator. That's different. That's just the liquid that doesn't really separate. But you can really see, hopefully, the separation of this paint. This is a completely brand new can. I just opened it. So if you can see kind of that haze at the top, that's all some chemical up in there. So just wanted to uh, make the point and make sure you mix your paint real well with the stir stick and get down to the bottom, get that stuff all mixed up. But I'm going to head and uh, mix some of this up. Not quite sure how much I'm going to do yet. And then um, get it inducing and probably grab a bite to eat in between. But I also want to make a pitch to make sure you wear proper breathing protection when you're doing this stuff. Even just mixing it, let alone spraying it, 
It's really kicking. It will mess you up. Isocyanides. Cyanide is a dirty word. So make sure you guys are safe if you do ever do this. Alright, so I'm ready to paint coat number one. I set the camera up in here. It's going to be in a Ziploc bag, so the, the image is probably not going to be that great. But, got everything. Wax and grease remover, I had mentioned that already. And then I went over everything with a tack cloth. The idea of the tack cloth is to just get loose, freestanding dust on the thing. You don't want to take the tack cloth and rub it real hard on the surface because it is like a sticky, waxy stuff. And if you rub it too hard, you will transfer it over to the panel that you're getting ready to paint, which would totally defeat the purpose, obviously. Um, so, I'm ready to go here. Again, I'm going to start with a relatively light first coat to try to correct the fisheye-ing that I had, or the cratering that I had in my panels the first time. Probably not as quite important on the panels that I've already painted, but the front balance here is going to be painted for the first time. That's going to be off camera. I'm probably not going to rearrange the camera to do that. And I'll try to speak real loud, but uh, if I need to, but I don't think it's going to work real well because I'm going to have the mask on and, uh, and it's going to be in a Ziploc. So I'm going to go ahead and get going. There's the conditions in the garage, about 69 and a half degrees or so, 68% humidity. Humidity is a little higher than I would like it to be, but the temperature is just about right for a good curing time. You're supposed to cure it about 70 degrees for at least 30 minutes in between coats. So that'll help out a lot. Alright, so I got the gun here, pointing it at the board, I've already started to practice a little bit on the board, but I wanted to go through it real quick. So I've got the non-disposable cup on. Alright, this is your fan control on the top, so that's what makes the fan either look like a circle like this one down here, if you can see that, or more like a football shape is what you're looking for. And then the one that I got the little mark on, that's the paint control. So I've got it dialed all the way in right now, so if I press it and hold, I don't get any paint. And all it does is allow this trigger to be pulled a little bit more. There's no real magic here. It just There's a little stopper in there and it just undoes the stopper. So the recommendation from SPI in their setup is two and three quarters turns out. So I'm going to give that a try. That's where that is. And then essentially I'm just looking to see if it's going to run. And that looks uh, yeah, like it's going to run. So I'm going to dial it in a quarter of a turn. It's also important here, which I just messed up, it's also important here to get about as close to the test bin or the test panel as you're going to be when you're actually painting. Because obviously that six to eight inches away is going to be important. Alright, a little bit of a run there, so I'm going to go in another quarter. Alright, and I think that'll do it. Let's see, I've got it. Two and one quarter turns out that was. Alright, so now that I got that set, slide you over here, adjust you a little bit. Probably going to block a lot of this shot, so you're just going to have to kind of deal with it. I'll try to edit out the nasty stuff, but that's about it. So I'm just going to do it to him. Alright, so I got a real heavy over here. That's pretty bad actually. I didn't follow my own advice. Gonna be a lot of sanding involved there. Alright, back in the booth. It's only been about two minutes since I stopped. It's about uh, 6.25 or so, so I'm gonna let this sit for about 30 minutes. In between coats, grab a bite to eat in between. Um, the door came out pretty good. You can see it's still kind of mottled, and that was to hopefully get a lighter first coat. And the second coat, I'll come in a little heavier in. But hopefully you can see right there the nastiness that I painted. Just, just too heavy in that spot. Um, but I don't see where I tried to stay away. I don't see a repeat of that cratering. Uh, I would not necessarily call that cratering, but just too much paint. So I'm not seeing that again. A little bit too much paint right there as well. That sanded out pretty good for me so far. So I, I, hopefully that'll be the same. Uh, and then the balance, the thing kept spinning on me and stuff. I need to come up with a better way to secure that. 
A uh, bunch of runs on it just because it kept moving. But I'm getting it covered and that was kind of the goal here to get it out of, uh, out of bare metal and into epoxy to stop any further rust. So another 30 minutes and we'll get the second coat on. Smells come down here quite a bit. It's about 6.45 or so. Still have uh, another 15 minutes or so to wait. This will be all I do tonight. I'll get this second coat on and then, and then start cleaning it up. But I did want to mention that you don't have to clean the entire gun disassemble wise. Um, so I got the lacquer thinner here in a little spray bottle. I did pour it in there. And you want to clean out the tip and the, the fluid path because you don't want obviously the paint to dry in the fluid path. So I'm going to um, hit it here again a little bit. And then just kind of got some um, lacquer thinner on the rag there and just wiped out the inside just to clean it up a little bit. When I'm done for the night, I will totally disassemble this and use a use a um, nylon brush and all that kind of stuff, toothbrush, just to get this well as well cleaned as I can. But no reason to do that in between coats, but you do need to get some uh, lacquer thinner through there to get the, the paint out through the paint stream so that it doesn't dry up on you. So this here is my... Um full run of the process. I got this from a, from a gentleman off the SPI forum. Essentially go to bare metal, hit it with epoxy, I've done that for these parts. Metal work, which is what I just got done, sanding, I did that last night. And now I'm on that second thing of epoxy. I'll do the filler, start the blocking all the way through. And then he starts epoxy again, polyester glaze and putty, more blocking, more epoxy, poly primer, more blocking, more epoxy, and then urethane. I'm going to do a little bit more research, but I think after the filler is done, I'm going to look at possibly doing, instead of an epoxy coat there, just going right to uh, 2K primer, but I'm not sure. I want to, I want to double check that. Um, the problem is, and what I think is going to happen, like I had mentioned at the beginning, is if I go to bare metal, i got to put epoxy on it. I'm not going to play around with uh, high build primer on bare metal. The epoxy is there for a reason, so I'm going to be doing that. So about another uh, five minutes here and I'll get the second coat on. About 7.20 or so and I'm done for the evening. Two coats on. Unfortunately, I started running out of the paint at the very, very end there on, on the valance. So there's going to be some spots towards the bottom here that didn't get as much as they should. Not going to worry about that too much. I am going to take this down to bare metal as I do more uh, filler work and stuff like that on it. So I'll just have to make sure that I, I get... Uh, two good full coats it'll stop the rust happy with the way everything came out I still have that one spot that like I expected in the uh, in the boot lid there but uh, I'm real happy it's so hard to show you especially with this gray but um, but these second coats on here look really like I could throw a coat of wax on it and and buff it out a little bit and it looks really really good so a little bit of a confidence booster on the uh, my my painting style I guess so that was nice to see. But otherwise, that's going to, like I said, that's going to do it for me for the evening. About uh, 24 to 48 hours for us to wait before you put filler on this stuff. I'm not going to be over here until this weekend, it being only Monday. So I've got a little time to, to sit and, and stew over what I'm going to do. But uh, hopefully when I get back over here, I'll mix up some filler and we'll, we'll move on to the next phase for these couple panels. Again, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for commenting. I think the last time I checked, I had 970 on the old subscriber count, so I'm getting there slowly but surely, uh, based on the uh, the trend of my membership. Hopefully, a couple of weeks, and, and we'll be at be at the magic thousand number. But otherwise, uh, keep the comments coming. Like I said, I always uh, always enjoy that and, and need to learn something new every day. So, otherwise, have a good rest of your week. See you guys this weekend. Cheers.